crafty friends, Jen Cassell here. Really excited to share with you the package I received from Crafter's Companion. Uh, they had gotten a hold of me and asked if I wanted to try some of their products. Um, I have been w really getting back into mixed media lately. Uh, if you've been following me on Instagram and even here on YouTube, I've been showing quite a few mixed media projects. Uh, I've been playing with inks and dyes and I've been having a lot of fun with it. And uh, I was really excited to um, start getting back into making Fulmarin flowers. So I had noticed that they had a whole bunch of Fulmarin there and there's a couple of tools that they gave me that I'm really, really excited to play with. But let me show you what they sent me. So I'm going to start off, and this is not one of the items that I requested, but I highly recommend them. I did open these. I've used them quite a few times. These are their scissors, and I got to tell you, I like them. I like them a lot. Six inch blade. It's a good size. These are nonstick, so that's a definite plus. And they just cut really, really well. So I highly recommend these scissors. This is a Petal Distress Toolkit. I did use this already. Um, it's, it's a lot of fun. So this goes on your finger like this. And if you look really closely, this is um, perforated. And when you go like this, you're going to hear a noise. And that's going to help... Um, shape that foamer in and I'll show you that in a moment. We have a couple of the foamer in. They do it in 9 by 12. This is the Country Lane set. It has four different colors to it. There's this really pretty pink. There's a really pretty red in there as well and then two different greens. And they also sent me the white flower foam. Um, I have used the white flower foam. i did do a few just to kind of try out. Uh, if you're not familiar with Fulmarin, um, it's a lot of fun. I've done a couple Fulmarin flower tutorials in the past, and I will be doing another one today. So these were all made with the white Fulmarin. This is a little cabbage rose that I made. Another one. There's this. Did two of these actually. And then I did this one as well. And then here's this right here. And this is what I'm actually going to be showing you how to make. Today. If if you're just starting out and you haven't really played with Fulmarin, white is a really good basic color to have. Uh, it obviously will take ink very well. Um, white is going to give you a very soft color, as you can see on all of these. Um, if you do want something brighter, you are going to want uh, the regular Fulmarin colored like this. Um, I, green is a great color to have on hand for all of your leaves. This, the colored Fulmarin will still take color as well. It just won't be as um, pronounced as it is on the white. But um, I do use both very, very frequently when making my flowers. They also sent me some of their stamens. This is the Country Lane stamens. So there is a darker green inside here as well as this lighter green that I've been playing with. And they also sent me this fun spray and sparkle, it's called, and I have it in gold. It's a gold glitter varnish. And I was thinking this could be really, really cool on flowers too. When you're done making the flowers, do a little spray of this and you'll have a really fine shimmer to it. But we're going to try that a little later because I haven't even opened this yet. So let's get to the tutorial. Let me go over what you're going to need. So when I'm creating Fulmarin, I always have some sponges near me. This is just a soft foam. Um, I do use a different um, variety of sponges, some a little denser than others. I rarely buy any foam for this. Um, I have a tendency to use like a packing foam for it. Well, of course, if you're making Fulmarin flowers, you need Fulmarin. Um, there really isn't a substitute for Fulmarin. You can't just use regular craft store foam. Um, it's much, much thicker and it doesn't have um, the properties that Fulmarin does. As you can see, this is extremely thin. 
Um, and when you heat it, it makes it super, super pliable. And as it cools, it will hold its shape. Uh, when I am using this, you can cut it with either um, a die, like you see here, or I use my Cricut as well. I do have a Maker. Um, I have the Maker series. It cuts Fulmarin beautifully. I don't know about the Explore series or the Silhouette. Um, for this tutorial, I am going to be using this really cool Distress Kit from Crafter's Companion. I'm also going to be using some dies. I did just pull a few of my favorite uh, dies from my stash that I use for flower making. Uh, this is a much older die set. I really can't tell you the origin of it. It's just been in my stash a long time. But any five, six petal flower is going to work. The secret is, is you want there to be a little bit of space in between the petals. Now, if you have a flower that doesn't have a whole lot of space in between the petals, you can just go in with a pair of scissors and snip. Um, you are also going to want some stamens and then you're gonna need some wire as well. Now, I just have a scrap piece of wire that I keep uh, with all of my Fulmarin flower making supply. And you're gonna use this to pull, pull the stems through the flower. Uh, as you can see, I have it folded in half and you want it at a pretty good point at the top. When I cut Fulmer in with my machine, it will cut through four layers. So as you can see, I have folded this into four and I'm just going to grab a couple of my dies and run it through. Okay, I have all of my flowers cut and I've also brought in my hot glue gun and you're also gonna want a heat source. The heat source can be, um, for, for instance, I'm just using a mini um, heat press. You could use a regular iron, it's totally up to you. Um, but you want it heated, I'm using mine on low. You want it quite warm, but you definitely don't want it hot because you don't want to scorch the foam. I've also brought in some Distress Ink. Uh, I like to use Distress to color Fulmarin, but I also like Gelatos. Uh, these are a lot of fun to use. Uh, Pan Pastels work really well. Um, you'll just kind of have to play with it to kind of get a feel of what you like best. So I have my flowers set up. For today's tutorial, I am going to be making um, four petal or uh, four layer flowers. So I'm doing one larger one and then one smaller one. I'm going to start with this coral ink. Uh, I haven't used this on foam yet, so I'm interested to see what the color is along with this pink. And I am just going to do the outer edges of the flower. This does not have to be very exact. Uh, it just adds just a little bit of dimension to it. And don't worry, as we're shaping the flower, you're gonna get rid of any hard edges. And I'm doing the front and the back. And I'm gonna do that to all four. Okay, now that I have all of my edges inked, I'm gonna go in with this yellow and I'm just gonna put a dot in the center. I'm just gonna go in with this Lucky Clover. Once again, don't have to go crazy with it. I'm just adding a little bit to the edges. Now we're ready to start shaping our flowers. So to shape my flowers, I am going to bring in this distress tool here. I'm going to grab some of my foam. And then I am also going to grab these ball tools. Um, Crafter's Companion does have some really nice ball tools. You're gonna wanna grab your wire and you're also going to want to grab um, your little piece right here. I've got my heat tool on and it's, it's very warm, but it is not hot. It's, it's not gonna, it's very, very warm. So be careful. 
I will sometimes use some tweezers to kind of grab my foam on and off of it. The more you start playing with it, the more you're going to be able to kind of feel when it's it's ready. I I hate to say it, but I do use my hands most of the time. So I'm going to come over here with my heat tool and I'm just going to lay my foam on top. And as you can see, it's starting to curve a little. I'm going to bring this over, make sure that's nice and curled. And it is shortening. It's, it's getting smaller. Now I'm just going to go in. And you're really concentrating on the end of the petals here. You should have a cone shape when you're done. Now I'm going to come over here. I'm going to put this here and then I'm just going to start. You want to hear that noise and you can, you can be a little harder with it. I tried going a little softer at first and I found I got a much, much better result when I put a little, little effort into it. So I'm just going to set that aside. I'm going to grab my next flower put it on the heat and you can reheat don't worry you don't like what you see reheat it now I'm pushing my petals up I'm twisting as you can see I'm kind of leaving the centers alone on it I'm gonna come over here now, do you need this petal distressor? No. Does it make life simpler? Yes. Yes, it does. And if you see that, you know, you've got a petal that isn't as distressed as others, bring it on in there. This one too. I want to distress this one a little more. There we go. I'm going to set it aside. Keep moving. Now you might be asking me what I'm working on over here. I use silicone when I am doing flower making. Uh, it's nice to have something to set the, the heat tool on, obviously, but it's also great to have some silicone available for your flowers to dry on. Um, you won't see it as much with the tutorial that I'm doing today, but if I'm not putting um, wires on it, I like to kind of press the flower down to give it a flat edge um, so that it'll lay nicer on my, my pages. All right, now that I have all my flowers inked, I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna set this down here. And I'm not going to distress this one. I am just going to leave it as it is. I just I like how these petals are are curling at the end. I might kind of put yeah. There we go. I like that. I'm going to use my foam to just kind of press down on that. This one I am going to distress a little. So, I'm going to bring it over here. And then I'm going to just take that edge And go like that. Let's try it on the distress tool. Could be fun. See what happens. Leave that there. 
See the difference though when I'm just doing it with my hands and then doing it with the distress tool? This distress tool I'm gonna be using all the time. I can see it. All right. Okay. So let's start with our larger flower. I'm going to bring this distress tool out of the way. I'm going to bring in my foam. I am going to use a larger ball for this. So concentrating below where all of our really cool, I mean, look at the Look at what the distress tool did. You've got all those little wrinkles in there. You want to leave those alone. I'm just kind of using my fingers to pull out on this edge. Now you can go in with a foam ball. You can stretch it around there, but you really want to leave those petal edges alone at the top. Just stretch. There we go. stretched on that ball. Okay, I like that. Now I'm gonna go in with a smaller ball and I'm just gonna press down. I'm really gonna press it in there. There we go. And I'm just going to set that aside. Let's grab the other large one and unfold it a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to go in. I'm just going to use my thumbs. Kind of stretch. And look at the dimension in that. Now we can start forming our flowers. I'm gonna grab a chunk of these. There's seven of them, okay? Um, I use, you know, it really just depends on what flower I'm making as to how many stamens I put in there, but I just grabbed a chunk and then there's seven. So I'm folding it over like this on my finger to create an arch. Now I'm gonna go in with my wire, separate your ends and slide it underneath and hook. You ideally want these lined up pretty well, just like this. So this is what you have. I'm holding together the ends at the bottom and this is coming out the top. I'm gonna go in to my smallest flower and I'm just gonna poke through the center. Bring it all the way up. How, how much you have your stamens coming out is really going to change the effect of the flower. When your stamens are nice and tight, it has, um, you know, a different effect than when they're, they're loose and, you know, kind of tall. And, and I'm going to leave mine kind of tall for this. So I'm going to come in with my next flower. And once again, I'm using one of the small ones and I'm just going to go through the bottom and pull up. 
Now I am going to make sure that these petals are a little staggered when I do this. You don't want your petals sitting right on top of one another. I'm gonna come in with a little hot glue and you don't need a whole lot, just enough to set it. Look at how it's coming together. It's so pretty. We'll grab this one next. Make sure those petals are staggered. Just really adds to the fullness. No flower in nature is perfectly symmetrical. And the last one. All right, so you have your flower. It's really pretty, right? Super, super pretty. Now I'm just gonna grab one of these and pull it into the bottom. Okay. Now, <clears throat> since I want to create a wire so here, I cut about 10 inches of wire and I'm gonna fold that over too. And I probably could have done this with the original wire that I was using to put the stamens in, but just creating a good point on there and I'm going to shove it into my stamens. And you're gonna take out the one that you used. Like I said, I probably should have done this first. Um, but I'm just so used to working with that. So, so we have our, our wire piece here. Now you're gonna go in with a little bit of floral tape. You've never used floral tape before. It's, it's sticky when you stretch it like that. So I'm just going to start at the stamens and start wrapping it around. We have our first flower. Really pretty, right? This is what the back looks like. Because when you're doing one of these, you will kind of see the back sometimes. So I do like everything to be nice and uniform for it. Okay, I'm going to do one more flower with you. So let's go in with some stamens, just grabbing a handful. This time I used five. It is a little smaller flower. I'm, you know, I am just going to start with a longer piece of wire instead of using my short wire. I'm folding it over my finger like this. I'm grabbing my wire, I'm coming through, and I'm cinching it at the top. I'm making sure that they're right about the same height and then I'm going over to my first flower and just poking through the center. I'm going to go in with my second flower. Grab a 
grabbing that hot glue. Just dab. I'm often asked, do I like doing foam or paper flowers more? And the truth is, is I like to do them both. I really can't choose. Um, I like them for different reasons. I like how realistic these look and the texture you can get is unbeatable. But I really do like, make, like making paper flowers as well. So don't make me choose. Don't make me choose but flowers are actually like my favorite craft to do i really really like to make flowers okay and my last one they might be a little labor intensive but this is just tv time for me love popping in a movie and zoning out and making some some flowers like I usually mass produce them when I do make flowers I don't just do like one or two look at how gorgeous that is so pretty right now I'm going to grab my floral tape, starting at the top, right underneath that. Now, before I go all the way down, I'm gonna grab the flower that I just completed, and I'm gonna start wrapping them together. I'm kind of pulling this shorter, or the smaller one down a little bit, and I'm finishing wrapping them together. Now, let's complete our leaves. Home stretch, guys. So once again, I'm leaving that, that tip. Now I'm gonna go through. I'm just gonna apply a little heat right here, just to give it a little crease. Same thing with this one. Adding just a tiny bit of heat to give it that crease. I think I'm gonna use some mold one for this. And I'm just going to go down that center. Okay, I'm gonna grab a little more wire These do not have to be long ones. I am going to cut right about there, there, there. Add just a little hot glue right on that crease. Okay. And if you want your petals to kind of bend a little more, you can set it a little higher on there. So I'll do it with this one. I'm gonna bring it all the way up to the top, just about. Now, if I want my leaf to do one of those, it will. Okay, I will probably start these. I'll wrap it with a little floral tape. Okay, do the same to this one. And I will say adding the floral tape to the wire makes it a lot easier to work with. Because sometimes, you know, the wire is 
a little, a little tough to work with because it's slick. I'm adding this tape really gives it a little grip. And as you can see, I'm, I'm not even going all the way down. I'm just covering it to the leaf. Now I'm going to go in these two. I'm going to make sure this one sits up a little higher like that. And now I will add it probably right there. So go in with my tape. As you can see, I'm pinching. I'm leaving a little slack so you have some movement in your vine and then just twisting down. And for this, I am just gonna take some tape off and start twisting. Move this guy out of the way. Okay, just like that. I'm even going to wrap it down here, give it a little added stability, okay? We've got two of our flowers on. Now the third, I'm going to bring that one down to the second petal here. I'm thinking maybe there, yeah, right there. This is a good spot. All right, finish line. I'm gonna shape it a little and kind of pull this guy out a little. Pull that. And you can add as many leaves, as many flowers to this if you want, as you want. This would look cute with a whole bunch of, of small flowers or smaller leaves. Just really pretty. There we go. And you could just, I mean, look at these. You could just put this on a card not have to do anything just a you know a flower vine and a sentiment and you're good to go gorgeous right all right so make sure to check out crafters companion i'm going to leave their links in the description box check out some of their foam products i'm really impressed with the foam that i used today um this pink is a lovely color and i love the addition of the coral super pretty um, check back because I will be doing another foam tutorial. I'm going to release, I'm going to do a cherry blossom for you to, or for Instagram probably, which is a really simple uh, foam or and flower. And I'm going to be using the white this time. But, and I, I do recommend this little distress tool. It really makes doing these petals like this outer edge makes them so realistic and so much fun um you can do it with your hands but this tool makes it so much easier if you like this video make sure to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button for more crafty content i'll see you in the next video bye